Welcome back to our series on the evolution of the bathroom. So last week, we took a look at the bathrooms of the 30s and then took a look at the bathrooms of the 40s and the 50s. Now, this bathroom I'm showing is a 40s bathroom. You can see that it still has some touches of American Art Deco, which is Streamline Modern. You can see that in the floor. And then we moved on to the fantastic designs that came out of the 50s. In particular, we focused on a lot of the pink and black bathrooms, very Elvis, very 50s. So this week, we are going to go forward and take a look at the bathrooms of the 60s and the 70s when we come back. Well, the last couple of entries in this series have gotten a bit over long, so I'm going to do the best I can to stay within our time frame this week. Mm, no guarantees, but I'm going to try. So let's start with this 1960s bathroom. And you're going to see that a lot of things have stayed the same, but a lot of things have changed. So let's start just going left to right. Let's take a look at that sink. Now, this sink looks very much like the sinks we saw in the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s. However, in the 30s, that sink probably would have been on uh, a porcelain clad pedestal. They weren't necessarily porcelain. A lot of them were cast iron with porcelain or painted finishes. And in the 1940s and 50s, the cabinet would have consisted of nothing more than a couple of chrome legs, often with integrated towel bars. So what's happening is the cabinetry is new. The sink is not. Also, we would have had separate hot and cold taps. This sink has a mixer. So you have separate hot and cold faucets that you can turn on and off, but the spigot is uh, one unit and the water is mixed so that you can get every everything from cold, cold water right up to scalding hot. And believe me, it was scalding hot in those days because they didn't have any regulators on the thermos to keep the water temperature at uh, a safe level. So that's one of the biggest innovations we see in the 60s, that faucet mixer. Then as we turn around and look at the tub, you notice we have the same general square design that was very popular in the 40s and 50s. It, it originally emerged in the 30s, but it wasn't until the 40s that it really took off. It was a square tub, and the bathing area extended from one corner of the tub to the other corner. One of the corners that didn't have that bathing spot was usually a nice large triangular shelf, and the other one was very often cut off to make a smooth corner so that the tub would not have to be placed into a full enclosure the way this one is. So this is an older tub style, but they've made some slight changes. By the way, they continue to play with this design for a long time. You will see it in the upcoming pictures and I will point it out to you. And look at the toilet. This is a wall mount toilet. They came out in the 1960s uh, and they were, in fact, present in, in the 60s, 70s, 80s. They have never really caught on. I don't quite understand why. 
because frankly, they're much easier to clean. But I don't know. We're not up to speed with this yet, I guess. Also, notice the colors. In many ways, this could pass for a 30s bathroom, but the primary difference between this bathroom and the 1930s bathroom is we've got nothing but shades of blue and white here. And for the 30s, they just would have found that as dull as dirt. Now, this is an ad for Formica. And we're looking at very early 60s. This might even be late 50s, but I don't think so. We have this massive yellow Formica counter. Now, obviously, the counter is going to be massive. The Formica company is, is doing this. This is their advertising. They want you to see what you can do with their product. And it really was pretty impressive. It was a very easy to clean surface. It was almost indestructible. And you can take this old Formica, and even if it is scratched within an inch of its life, you can actually repaint it today and get this wonderful Formica back for most intents and purposes. Um, it's a very forgiving surface. And this emerged in kitchen countertops in the 40s and 50s. Uh, it emerged in the 40s, took hold in the 50s, but it didn't hit the bathrooms until the 1960s. So also notice that we have what appears to be an older mosaic style tile floor, definitely 50s, and we have the simplified color palette that we saw in the mid-century. In this case, we have this sort of, I don't know, seafoam green, I'm going to call it, bright shock yellow, and then gray tile on the walls. So the color palette, even though it's bright, is still very limited. Now, this piece, this is interesting. We've got a few things that we ought to take a look at here. Notice the sink is built into a vanity table. This is new. Now, this particular image probably shows a bespoke sink vanity combination. It's very likely that this is not something you could have just gone to your local home center and picked up out of catalog. It's very likely that someone actually customized an older vanity table for the purpose. But this shows us the beginnings of that built-in sink, sink with cabinetry. And that, by the way, today is just a staple of the modern bathroom. Now, the tub, it's a little hard to see in this picture, but I have some other pictures that will point it out a little better to you. The tub, although it is rectangular, still has that angled bathing area. In this case, it's a little sleeker. It makes for two very small triangular uh, surfaces. And as you can see, they've got a bottle of green something or other on the triangular surface in the back corner. But if you look closely, you can see there's a corresponding triangle in the front right section. You will see more of this they were still playing with that design. The toilet is also something new. We have a lower tank and it's integrated into the porcelain bowl. This is the beginnings of the one piece toilet. We will see a lot of variations uh, of this uh, in the 60s and 70s. And it looks as if they were really, really trying to get as much as they could out of this design. I understand that. Toilet designs at this point had not changed in 50 years. So they were looking for something new. By the way, they did find it. It's just that it never seemed to catch on. And one more thing before we walk away, please notice 
the large rug in the middle of the bathroom floor. That was just a very big thing in the 60s, carpeting in the bathroom. Again, we have a limited color palette. It's not very bright. It's certainly not very 30s. Now, this bathroom is later in the 60s. We're moving into the 1970s in this bathroom. But the reason I took it out of order is because I wanted you to see a better image of that angled bathing area within the rectangular tub. And I think this picture probably shows it pretty well. If you looked at it from above, you would not see the head of the tub and the foot of the tub at opposite ends. You'd see them diagonally to one another. They were still playing with that 1940s design. They still wanted that little corner shelf on the tub, and this was how they were getting it. Now, notice we have a wall-mounted toilet once again, just as we had in the first picture. And since, as we all know, we don't see wall-mounted toilets in every house we go into, and we are 60 years down the road from this, the wall-mounted toilet hasn't really caught on. Again, I don't understand it. They are so much easier to clean. But take a look at some of the things we do have here. We have round sink bowls that are inset into a countertop with that, they still have that little steel rim around them, but the faucet technology is vastly improved. At this point, we have often a single faucet and tap that you can adjust. One faucet and you're good to go. You get your everything from your cold water right up to your scalding water, and oh, we just love that. Now, there is a countertop and a cabinet right underneath it, and it's hard to tell, although if you look at the toilet, the section of the cabinet that is adjacent to the toilet shows that it's really not a full cabinet. It's more like an apron area under the sinks. Also, the cabinet, the walls, and this other display cabinet over the toilet are all finished off with something that looks like woven rattan. If you look very closely at the picture, you can see it's very three-dimensional. Again, they were playing with all kinds of odd surfaces in the bathroom. We have what looks like a fringed shade over the tub, which I believe is there for decoration only and not intended to be pulled down as a shower curtain. At least I hope not. And this giant rug in the middle of the floor. So once again, we're looking at really hard to clean bathrooms. At this point, we are putting form over function. This is just not going to be a clean, hygienic area, simply because there are too many porous surfaces, too many nooks and crannies for dirt and germs to hide in, and too many soft fabric surfaces that are not going to be cleaned every week. Now here we have that same tub configuration. See, it was very, very popular in the early 60s. Uh, it was their answer to the square tub, but it did not last. We have a low toilet tank that appears to be integrated in with the bowl, and I believe it is. Plus, we have our sinks set into that half-circular cabinet. This would have been a very sort of elegant, trendy, modern bathroom for the early to mid-60s. We have a little more of a color palette here. We have pink fixtures, the black marble, the white cabinet below, and sort of beige on the walls, and again, the rug. We have to have that rug. 
and the blue is coming in with all the towels. So they're bringing some color into this, but I'm not really satisfied that they're doing a very good job of it. Now this bathroom, which again is out of order, this is the late 60s. I brought this one in just because I knew we would be talking about color. We have the Harvest Gold bathroom fixtures that are going to really come into their own in the 1970s. So this is late 60s. We have blue and white cabinetry and walls, and we have it all tied in together with these flower power towels and shower curtains. This is just unspeakably hideous. This is a real bathroom, though. This is what bathrooms looked like in the late 60s. A couple of things to notice, because these are, are they're new to the bathroom. They're not new in general, but new to the bathroom. And they are going to be a passing phase. We're going to see this in the 1950s, more in the 1960s. It's, they've come into their own in the 1960s and a little bit in the 1970s, and then it sort of fades away. And that's the sliding cabinet door. Notice all of these cabinets have sliding doors, and this is something we haven't seen a lot of in the past. And once we get out of the 70s, we're really not going to see this again. This is a mid-60s bathroom. I would describe this as a Hollywood Regency style, although that term didn't exist in the mid-60s. They would have just considered this wonderfully elegant. Pink and red, oh my gosh, and so much of it. Again, we're talking about a bathroom here that is not going to be easy to clean. All of this ormolu on the mirror and the fancy embossed gilded doorknob towel holders, even the chairs. This is all going to be extremely difficult to keep clean and sanitary. And I have to say, when I look at these bathrooms, just because we now have very clean, very sterile bathrooms, I look at this and I just cringe, especially in the wake of the pandemic, when I think to myself, oh my, do you remember when we were taking bleach to everything in sight two years ago? Ooh, what a nightmare this bathroom would have been. This next one is another with those sliding cabinet doors, as you'll notice, as well as a sliding cabinet over the sink, sliding door cabinets over the toilet. It's just sort of like they've gone nuts with that sliding door thing. Wall-mounted toilet, low tank. In fact, it's possible. I can't see the toilet clearly because there's a wall in the way. This might even be a tankless toilet. If it is, it's a very early version of a tankless toilet. A tankless toilet does actually have a tank. It's just that the tank is hidden in the wall. It's uh, located between the studs, so it's out of sight. But that's what this one looks like to me. The cabinetry is very mid-century, sort of branding this as early 60s. We don't have a medicine cabinet as we would think of it. That cabinet over the vanity, below the mirror, which also seems to have mirrored doors. That's your medicine cabinet. The mirror itself is on the wall with the fluorescent light overhead. Fluorescent lights in the bathroom were something that came in in the 1950s, but really took over in the 1960s and fortunately didn't last because most people look jaundiced under fluorescent lights. And I imagine people just didn't want to get up and look at themselves that way in the morning. So here we go. 
This is mid to late 60s. I'm going to guess maybe 67, 68. Now this is this trend that came into the bathrooms in the early, late 60s. And because it's the 60s, you have to specify when you're talking about the late 60s. No, this is not the psychedelic late 60s. It's just before then. This trend was bringing the outdoors in. And what we have here is a bathroom that is partially indoors and partially outdoors. The toilet and the sink are on our side of the sliding glass doors, but the shower is outside, just outside of the house. So we're going to have to assume this is California because that wouldn't work in New England. In fact, that wouldn't work in most of the country. And I'm thinking if you tried to do something like that in Florida, your shower would be so full of insects, lizards, and assorted vermin, you would probably even have larger vermin in to feed on the smaller vermin. So, in fact, this is one of the crazier ideas they came up with. For obvious reasons, something like this is extremely impractical and only showed up in decorator magazines, but it was a big influence. We're going to see more of this influence as we go along. Here we go. This is a more modest, let's bring the outside in. We have a sunken tub that appears to be made of some sort of striated stone not sure what it is. My guess would be some kind of polished granite. We have these big sliding glass doors right in front of the bathtub, and it was their effort to, like I say, bring the outside in. The problem with that, and anyone who has ever dealt with the bathroom with huge uncovered windows knows this, that there are a lot of things on the outside that really need to stay on the outside. You know, like when the dirty old man next door is mowing his lawn when you're trying to change in your bathroom. So, yeah, not very practical, and quite frankly, very few people are willing to expose themselves, well, quite literally, to such an extent as this. Here is another late 60s bathroom. Uh, we have a fully surrounded tub, a nice tile surround. We have plants and shelves and decorative items. In fact, it even looks like they've got a magazine rack here at the bathtub and a fireplace in the room. So at this point, we are not only, like, bringing the outside in, we're bringing the library in. We are turning the bathroom into some kind of spa. Once again, we've got a lot of carpeting, including, if you look at the lower right corner, we've got wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. We will be seeing much more of this, unfortunately. Ah, and here we go. More wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. This is another bathroom of the mid to late 60s. Notice the skirt length. That is telling you that we are at about 66, maybe 67 here. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, we have a semi-sunken tub. The tub seems to be about half sunk into the floor, and then there's a step leading up to the tub, so that from that step, the tub sort of appears sunken. We've got a lot of wood in this bathroom. Now, we have wood in other bathrooms in the 1960s, but not to this extent. In fact, we usually don't see this much wood in bathrooms until the 70s and 80s. So this would have to be something I would consider to be a cutting-edge bathroom, rather advanced for what the popular styles were. But notice, we're still bringing the outside in. We've got this 
big skylight over the bathtub. This is much more practical than the sliding glass doors, because unless the dirty old man next door is prepared to pull a ladder alongside your house and climb up on the roof, he's not going to see everything you're doing in the bathroom. So this design would have been more palatable for the average homeowner. Another thing we should look at, we'll see more of this later, as I say, this is rather a cutting edge bathroom, is notice the divider. And this is on the left hand side of the uh, double sink vanity here. It is a sort of frosted plastic. And we will see that used more extensively in the 1970s. But again, whoever designed this bathroom, they were probably about 10 years ahead of their time. Okay, this is a bathroom in, uh, I don't want to go so far as to say an ordinary house, but this is definitely a bathroom people lived in. And you can tell they live in the bathroom. You know, they, we've, we've even got, you know, what I assume is an ashtray on the table next to the toothbrush holder. What we have here is a lot of mirroring. There's a large plate glass mirror over the tub. The tub surround is mirrored. There's a mirror over the toilet. There's a mirror over the sink. And we also have this wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Uh, and we even have a rug over top of it, my, my. This was actually really starting to become ubiquitous. It would be everywhere in the 70s. In the 60s, this was when it started. Unfortunately, I cannot tell from this picture if that is actually a corner toilet. You can get corner toilets. They are specialty items, and if you have a bathroom with a tight space or a strange configuration, a corner toilet is often the answer, but I can't tell on this one. If it is a corner toilet, well, good for them. Definitely, they were forward-thinking people. Once again, this is early, late 60s. I'm going to say 67, 68 here. We have a fully sunken bathtub, and notice it's got that same angled configuration that creates little shelves on opposite corners of the tub. We have a very simple color palette once again, blue and white. Blue and white was just extremely popular in the 60s. And if you look into the little bathroom closet, the toilet closet area, you can see that we have the low tank toilet although this is not wall mounted, it's a low tank toilet and it's a one piece configuration with the tank built right into the bowl. But also notice that the sink is set into the countertop, suggesting this countertop is probably for mica with that little steel ring. And that's something from an earlier era. So what we're seeing here is we're sort of seeing the, the, the whole spectrum. A sink that had a 1950s sort of installation, a bathtub that was built on designs that came out of the 40s, and that low toilet in the little toilet alcove that would later become popularly known as a European style toilet. So yeah, it's all over the place. That, however, was very, very normal for the time. Okay, this is late 60s. We are fully late 60s, moving on toward the 70s here. Notice the sink installation is the same with that little steel strip that was used to fill the gap between the sink and the countertop. We have the same strangely angled bathtub. I can't see anything of the toilet, but we are seeing more wood in here. And we are seeing 
uh, the late 60s color orange, which is eventually going to become the 70s hot color. And we've got these large sliding glass doors bringing the outside in. Also, if you look at the lighting over the sink, you'll see those frosted plexiglass panels again. Now, this one is an oddball. I'm assuming this came from a decorator magazine or some sort of uh, designer catalog. It's not your ordinary late 60s bathroom. Definitely advanced. However, we've still got some of the elements they were working with, you know, this plant in the bathroom. In fact, that was one of the reasons I chose it. In the late 60s, bringing, like, the garden into your bathroom in a very literal sense, like a giant built-in planter with a huge rubber tree in it, that was a thing. And it was something that was popularized by the very fancy upscale bathrooms, but never quite caught on because very few people had the space to spare you know, for both a tub and a rubber tree plant. This is, boy, this is just so very late 60s. We have the 60s favorite bathroom color, which is blue. We have the 70s avocado green, we still have the 60s sink technology. It's still being installed with those steel bands into for mica countertops. But one of the interesting things about this is we're seeing the strip of vanity lighting. Gosh, for the life of me, I can't remember what it was called. I always called it marquee lighting because it just looks like one of those Hollywood movie marquees. That strip vanity lighting with the naked bulbs would later really become hot. In fact, that was like the thing to do in the 1980s. But we're seeing this here and we're seeing it in the 60s. I would like this bathroom so much more if there weren't if there wasn't so much mirroring in it, because that keeps reflecting that blue and green back and forth. Oh, what a nightmare. This is not a sunken tub. If you look carefully, you'll see the tub is placed on the floor, but it gives the appearance of a sunken tub because of that additional step. And we have some extensive countertop and cabinetry work in here. Again, unusual for the era, but this will come in later. We have the inset sink framed in that little steel strip. By the way, that's one of the things that anchors us to the 1960s. When we look at bathrooms like this, we may be tempted to say, oh no, that's got to be 80s. No, they were not doing that thing with the sink in the 1980s. And of course, these are high-end bathrooms. So we know that their sink installation was absolutely state-of-the-art. That's how we know 1960s. This time, instead of the skylight or the sliding glass door, we have this greenhouse window. Just We have like this whole terrarium. We have turned the bathroom into a terrarium basically. Now we have another picture, fortunately for us, we have a great view of the toilet in this. This was 1960s toilet, low tank. Now there, there is a tank in there, it's just low, integrated with the bowl, and that that was available. That was cutting edge. What that was not was something that was going to catch on with the mainstream. We have that same blue and white color scheme. And notice, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the blue design in the white tile work. And then if you look over to the right side, 
on the cabinet doors, you see that design repeated. And you will see that the doors are covered in the wallpaper you see on the walls. Also, look at the chandelier and the big fluffy rug in the middle of the floor. Now, we're finishing up the 60s with this, because I know everybody wants to see a psychedelic 60s bathroom. And unfortunately, for most people, the closest you came to the psychedelic 60s bathroom was that blue and white and yellow flower power bathroom I showed you earlier on. But this is late 60s. This is probably European. And we've got, we've got carpet on the ceiling. Uh, these people, they were carpet freaks. So, yeah, carpet on the ceilings. We have all the primary colors, red, blue, yellow. Additionally, we've got some orange. We've got some white. This is just color central. This is what people think of when they think of late 60s bathrooms. The problem is nobody had a bathroom like this. This is one of those things that is just pretty much relegated to the very expensive decorator magazines of the time. Well, I was really hoping we were going to be able to get into some 70s bathrooms on this video, but we have already gone well over time, so I'm afraid that's going to have to wait for tomorrow. So, I hope you enjoyed the 60s bathrooms. We will pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. I will see you all then. In the meantime, have a terrific day, and we're going to watch a slideshow on the way out. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.